I know I'm a little bit of a strange PC gamer out there because I prefer to do my gaming on laptops rather than on a big PC desktop, although those new NVIDIA graphic cards might change my mind on all that. Uh, but our friends at Intel know that I dig these gaming laptops, so they sent me another one to review. It is the MSI GS66 uh, Stealth model, and it looks very cool in, uh, I like to call it Batman Black. It's very sleek and very understated. It does have the Steel Series RGB keyboard where you can have every key on the keyboard light up in different colors and make it all super flashy for you if you want. It has lots of gamer tools built into it, including including the MSI Dragon Center, and it's got the Intel Comet Lake i7-10750H plus HM470 processor. The display is a 15.6 inch 300 hertz IPS level display with a thin bezel. The graphics card is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super with Max-Q design. It's got GDDR six and eight gigs of RAM. The memory is DDR4, 2666, two slot max 64 gigs. The storage is a one terabyte SSD drive, which means that games load up very, very quickly. And I noticed that while I was playing Avengers actually on the PC and comparing and contrasting with playing Avengers on uh, the PlayStation 4 Pro, every time you would die the, or load into a new area, you would get a lot more of the superhero renders on the PS4 Pro. They do a good job of kind of uh, masking the loading screen with this great art, but I'd see a lot less of that art when I was playing off the SSD on the laptop. It also looked better on the laptop than it did on my PS4 Pro, even though I was only able to figure out how to output the video from this in 1080p on my OLED display. I couldn't figure out 4K output, but I know that you can output in 4K on this. I don't know if all the software, all the game software will take advantage of that. It has Wi-Fi 6 in there and Bluetooth 5.1. These are the ports in it. It's got one Thunderbolt 3 with PD charging, one Type-C USB 3.2, three type a usb 3.2 one hdmi 2.0 one combo jack and one killer LAN jack the web camera on this thing is absolutely terrible it totally sucks and you're going to be the laughing stock of every zoom meeting that you have on this thing if this is what you use so you definitely need to invest in an external device and the sound coming out of the speakers on this thing is just okay i'd prefer to just plug right into my receiver and play on my television set and if i was on the road I would have headphones on. This thing's got an enormous battery in it, so this is actually pretty damn decent for traveling. Although, I, you know, I've been playing on gaming laptops for a while. I always like to keep them plugged in, but it's a big battery. I think it's the max that you're allowed in overhead on an airplane. So it's a small, thin, light laptop with a lot of battery power, which is pretty damn cool. The machine also has some pretty decent cooling in it, but you are going to notice the cooling. The engines will fire up and they do make noise. Even ab above the din and the uh, carnage that I was enjoying in Marvel's Avengers, I could still hear the fans just working it, especially as more crazy action was happening on screen. And the other thing that I noticed as well while I was using this and playing games on it is there's a little tiny clicking sound that was happening. I don't know if that's reading off the drive or what's happening in there, but I can hear the it didn't bother me, but it's definitely a sound that I heard as the machine was running. The reason why I love playing games on laptops like this is that, of course, you can take it anywhere. It's very portable, but I also like to play video games on TV more than I like to sit at my desktop and where I do all my work and editing and all that stuff and then sort of uh, you, you sit back to play a game on the exact same thing. There are some games like turn-based strategy games and stuff which uh, are more appropriate for that but for the most part I like to uh, hook it up to my TV and sit back and slouch and think of my mom talking about my bad posture uh, but you know I like to be comfy when I'm playing video games. In terms of game software that I threw at it I played some Mortal Shell which was very moody and cool and it ran great played some Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, and I didn't really notice any, you know, huge quality leap comparative to what I was enjoying on the PlayStation 4 Pro, uh, but it ran well. It ran very smoothly, and I got addicted immediately to the game again. I also checked out WRC9 Racing, which is the rally racing game. It ran quite well. I did notice a little bit of aliasing. I had everything sort of up to the max, and I still noticed a little bit of aliasing, but that's probably more to do with the game's engine than 
what the graphics card was really pumping out, but it still looked pretty darn decent. I checked out Maneater, also, as David Hayter described when I interviewed him, incredibly addictive and super fun to be chomping on all kinds of hapless swimmers. And I also checked out Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, which was surreal. I got immediately addicted to the game, even though it's a remake or a remaster of a classic game that uh, I always loved when I reviewed it back then, always thought fondly back on it, and then, yes, it is as fun as I remembered it, and it was running great. So the only hiccups that I had in terms of software that was giving me some issues was Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which I've mentioned before has given me issues on other hardware that I've run, whether it's been desktops or other laptops, even though it's been years since that has come out. And uh, NBA 2K21, which I don't know if it's been fully optimized. And of course I went to the NVIDIA site and updated for all the game drivers. Uh, but it just wasn't running as smoothly as I wanted it to. But, you know, this is a powerful machine, and I have no doubt that if you get something like this and you fiddle and you tweak and you change your settings and you update everything, you know what it is with PCs. There's always some fiddling and tweaking and tuning that you can do to get better performance out of this. There is a game mode built into this laptop as well. It wasn't as seamless and as easy to enter the gaming landscape as I found checking out that Acer Predator laptop that I looked at not too long ago, which really blew my mind. And it kind of uh, spoiled me a little bit. I dig the screen. I like the 300 hertz display. I think the screen on this actually was better than the Acer laptop. I also like the sleek stylings of this machine. And MSI, as you might know, if you follow the messaging around the products that they make, is really looking at that creator market and that gamer market. So a lot of streamers and you know a lot of people that edit and do some graphics work and stuff like that. So this machine is definitely able to run most game software where even super high-end stuff and also all of the graphics packages and editing packages and stuff that you might want to throw at this as well. The specs that I've got configured on this laptop sort of price out at around 2700 bucks Canadian. So what would that be? $2,200 American or something? Which I think is not an unreasonable price for the amount of horsepower that you get in here. And of course you can configure with more RAM and more storage, probably some upgraded uh, graphics cards. But you know what? Solid hardware. MSI makes cool stuff and all of the componentry in here is you know speaks for itself it's just that i played around with the acer predator not too long ago and that blew me away i thought that machine was awesome and anything that i threw at that was just perfect but it also had a better graphics card in it and a, uh, you know a more advanced processor um, so this isn't quite the same horsepower but it's still damn solid and i'm sure that because it's been out for a few months you could probably find this at a decent price point but definitely do keep in mind that 11th gen intel chips are coming and new nvidia graphic cards are coming as well but solid sleek well made and as far as playing games on this i came away pleased with the msi gs66 stealth i'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10.